Yo, what is up, guys? Welcome to the video. I hope your day is going great. Mine's been fantastic, and once again, we got the juice for the second day in a row. Today, we're talking about XQC. He called out all of Team France today in a ranked game. So it was him versus Poco, AKM, and Soon, who were all three stacking. And we all know this. XQC, he takes his ranked games very seriously. He completely went off on Color Hex last week for absolutely no reason, just because his team lost in a game and well he did it again today calling out AKM super hard telling Poco and soon he hopes they don't have any advantages on stage because they're gonna need it guys we're gonna roll the clips in this video showing all the crap he talked XQC has always been a trash talker and I love him for it he makes the games exciting he adds a storyline I've gone over this in the past guys then after we're going to be taking a look at South Korea's World Cup team because we have even more juice it seems like they are making a roster roster change. Now, I honestly have no idea how the World Cup roster changes work, but it seems like South Korea has swapped out a decent amount of players. Looking at their new roster, this is what it's going to be. Fate from the Los Angeles Valley on main tank, Fury from the London Spitfire on off tank, Fleta from Seoul Dynasty on DPS, Libro from New York Excelsior on DPS, Jonak from New York Excelsior on flex support, Animo from New York Excelsior on main support, and then lastly, Carpe from Philadelphia Fusion on DPS. So later in the video, we're going to go over which players were swapped out, why I think they did this, and if it was a good decision or bad decision. Then guys, that's not going to be it. We have to talk about an announced player for Boston Uprising. They just officially signed Blase, the former DPS player for the LA Gladiators Legion Academy team. And then we're still not done, guys. We have a lot to talk about today. At the end of the video, we're going to be taking a look at an announcement from Shanghai Dragons saying that they were going to announce their roster on the 22nd. Well, the 22nd is gone and passed, specifically in China. It's completely the 23rd, so I'm not too sure when they're going to announce this. We'll just have to see. I feel like they kind of debated us, but we're going to wait it out. Hopefully, it's some big players. I do know a lot of the Kongdu Panthera players have signed over there, like Luffy and Koma, so we'll just have to wait for it, and that's going to be the video, guys. If you're excited to hop into it, be sure to drop a like, subscribe to my channel for more daily content. I upload Overwatch League news, updates, rumors, drama, anything you want to know, you'll find here daily. So hit that button. And now without further ado, let's hop into it. So let's start this video off with good old XQC. As I said earlier, he was in a ranked game going up against a lot of the players from the France Overwatch World Cup team, which by the way, Canada and France will be playing at BlizzCon in the first round of the Overwatch World Cup playoffs. The winner will move on to the semifinals and face either Finland or China. This is most definitely one of the most anticipated matchups. There's a lot of hype surrounding both of these teams. My personal opinion going into it, I do think Canada has an advantage. We will talk about that a little bit more, but let's focus on what XQC said to Poco, AKM, and Soon in a ranked game. So it was on Busan, the new control map. It was tied 1-1, one -one, and the last round was 99-99. It was literally the last team fight, and XQC, he lost it. And of course, he was upset about his team. And of course, he blamed them and he typed in the chat, letting AKM, Soon, and Poco all know that they will not have an advantage of matchmaking on the stage. And to be fair, I did watch the game and XQC's team wasn't all that good. They were okay. It was a decent match. It was close, so it's not like they were complete trash as XQC made it out to be, but they weren't the best players either. But something to note that Soon was playing Reinhardt for the enemy's team, and to be honest, Soon played pretty damn good on Reinhardt, and at times he did get the best of XQC. XQC. Well, anyways, let's go ahead and roll the clip so you guys can see exactly what went down at the end of that game. Yeah, I, I, th I think we have to grab to stop them. I have to go touch, boys. I didn't even touch. That definitely didn't get a count for, for um, last. It did.
Yo, attack shot, you want to bounce over. Pass that little bit of the bounce over, some of the other shit. I'm not mad. I just hate losing rating that we could have gained just because of matchmaking. So there it is boys, the long version of what happened between XQC and some of the Team France members. I honestly loved AKM's response to XQC, and that actually got to XQC. I know some people are going to be like, oh, XQC was just joking. Let's be honest, we know he wasn't joking. We know how serious he takes his rank games. I said it already in this video. When he loses, he gets upset. He can say as much as he wants after that he wasn't being serious or he was joking. You can tell he was serious and he was upset. He did not want to lose. And the fact that he said what he said to Akam and then deleted him, you know that was in response to what Akam said about soon outrining XQC. XQC wasn't happy about that, he was definitely salty. Obviously, after like this whole little thing five minutes later, XQC doesn't have like bad feelings about AKM. I'm sure they're going to get along after the BlizzCon match, but in that very moment, XQC was heated and he was talking some serious trash, and I'm sure he cannot wait to play these guys on that BlizzCon stage. I know I can't wait, and I do think Canada does have the advantage. Now, both teams are filled with Overwatch League talent. You have Unco, Soon, AKM, Nico now, who is signed with Team Paris, and then obviously Poco, who just went to the Grand finals with Philadelphia Fusion, that France team is stacked, but I have my reservations because they had a really close match against Germany, and they didn't look all that great in the match. They were running a lot of goats, and Germany was standing up against them, and I feel like if Germany could run goats and stand up to France, I do think Canada can do it as well, especially with players like No, XQC, Agility, Surefor. These are some solid Overwatch League players as well. And then obviously with Jane coaching them in the back, I do think they have the advantage going up against France. I think it will be close, probably a 3-2 or 3-1 victory for Team Canada, but that is my prediction. I do want to say though, shout out to XQC for making this match even more spicy. I'm excited for BlizzCon. World Cup is going to be great. It's the only super competitive matches we get from Overwatch League level players outside of the Overwatch League. And I will honestly take anything I can get, guys. Let me know down below if you enjoyed this drama. Who do you think is going to win? Is it going to be France or is it going to be Canada? And now let's go ahead and move on and look at the South Korean Overwatch World Cup roster because they have made some changes going into BlizzCon and it's not the ones I expected. So here is a screenshot of the new roster, which I did go over a little bit earlier. Don't worry about it. South Korea's new roster here, guys, is going to be Fate, Fury, Fleta, Libero, Jonak, Animo, and Carpe. So I went over this. Let's go ahead and look at the players that got replaced because you guys might have forgot. So Fleta is in for Sabi Olby, the New York Excelsior DPS player. This is an interesting change. I do think Fleta brings a little bit more flexibility. Genji, Junkrat, he just provides a lot of projectile play and a high level Widow. And this would be an interesting duo with Carpe because usually Carpe would be on Widowmaker duty, right? But now Fleta can kind of play that Widowmaker, maybe not to the very, very same level as Carpe, but it's up there. It's one of the highest in the world. And this could allow Carpe to flex a little bit more on a Tracer, on a McCree, whatever it is, he can flex more. As for the third DPS, it's going to stay the same. They still have Libero playing DPS. He can flex on a lot of things. I think this was a decent idea to keep him in. Him and Fleta can both play like those projectiles, Hanzos, Farah, stuff like that. And I do still see Carpe getting 100% playtime and these two kind of swapping out here and there. It is interesting seeing Sabiobi go, but it kind of makes sense because he can't provide too much in this meta. And I don't know what he's been flexing to lately because we haven't seen him since the Overwatch League. In this meta, like, yeah, he can play a Tracer. Maybe he's been working on Brigida. Hopefully for next season, he's going to need to widen his hero pool. Anyways, that's going to be it for DPS. The next change comes in the off tank role, and it's going to be Fury coming in for Mako. This one's pretty self-explanatory. I think Fury overall is probably just performing better right now than Mako, and it's a better idea to get him in there. Especially in the Overwatch League playoffs, Fury, he popped off, and honestly, if Prophet or Gesture weren't the MVPs, I would have gave it to Fury. Now, moving on to the last last change, we're looking at supports, and it's going to be Animo coming in for Ark. and this one is really interesting because, so I have leaked previously that Ark was supposed to be traded over to Washington DC alongside Wizard Hyung and Janice. The deal fell through because of specific reasons, New York Excelsior, they wanted too much money for him, and DC couldn't afford it. And the reason why Ark 
wanted to go over to DC is because he's probably not going to be getting as much start time as he wants. With the rise of Anima at the end of season one, it seems like he proved to the coaches that he should be the starting main support. And now this move by the South Korean coaching staff makes even more sense for that because guess who the coach of the South Korean World Cup team is? That's right, it is one of New York Excelsior's coaches, guys. And it could be the same person who decided that Animo going into the next season is going to be having priority on that main support role over Arc. So as I said, this actually means a lot more than just the World Cup roster. And I don't I don't know what else to say about it. I thought Arc was amazing in season one. I also thought Animo was good, but I, I don't know, man. If that's the decision the coaching staff wants to make, that's what they want to make. And we're gonna have to see how it plays out. But that's gonna be it for the roster changes on South Korea. One thing to know is I was a little surprised that Fate stayed in there instead of Fisher. They brought in Fletter from Soul Dynasty, so I kind of felt like they would also bring in Fisher. I don't know how many roster changes they can make. Maybe three is the cap, and they wanted to do these three over Fisher, but I still feel like Fisher would have been a better pick than Fate, especially considering his performance in the group stage. It wasn't terrible, but Fisher obviously would have done better. That's going to be it though, guys. Be sure to leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about these roster changes, and let's go ahead and move on and talk about the Boston Uprising briefly. So Boston Boston Uprising just signed a new DPS player, and I have talked about it previously. I did leak it on Twitter and talked in my videos, but it's official now. The Boston Uprising announced this on Twitter saying, let's give a big Boston welcome to our new player. Blase. So Blase is going to be teaming up with what it seems to be Stryker going into season two. I know Stryker was amazing in season one. Blase, he did decent on the LA Gladiators Legion roster. I don't know if he's at the same level of maybe somebody like Dream Casper, who obviously, you know, made very, very bad decisions and shouldn't be in the league, but he still was a good player and he provided a lot to Boston. I don't know if Blase can take over and bring the same level of play. We'll just have to wait and see. Let me know what you guys think about this pickup and let's go ahead and move on and talk about Shanghai. So Shanghai Dragons, they made this post on Twitter. Coming soon, October 22nd, late. Now, maybe this late has something to do with them possibly delaying this announcement even more, but October 22nd is gone and passed, guys. I think maybe Pacific time zone right now is the only one that is left in 22nd, but China's almost on to the 24th now, and I feel like they should have definitely announced their roster. I don't know if it's a debate. I don't know if they're trolling. I don't know if they're... I don't, I don't know if it got delayed. I have no idea what's going on, but I think we can all expect a big Shanghai Dragons announcement very, very soon because they have hinted to signing six new players, and as I said, a lot of them are going to be coming from Kong to Panthera, and it's going to be a pretty strong team. They're not going to go 0-28 and 28 next season, guys. I guarantee you they get a win. But that's going to be it for my video, guys. If you enjoyed it, be sure to drop a like. You can also subscribe if you want to stay updated daily on Overwatch League news. I'm out of here, guys. Thank you for watching. Peace.